Hi, I'm Whitney. Hi, I'm Kara. And we are Jenny from the Blockchain. Today, we're going to answer some questions about the Ledger Nano S. Recently, we did a video um, boxing it and reviewing it, and got a lot of views, and there was a lot of questions, and a lot of comments, and a lot of confused people. Yeah, a lot of confused people really asking how to use the product, or just a lot of questions. So, today we're going to do the 21, I guess, most popular questions we've gotten either in the comments, being DM'd, emailed, in Facebook our Facebook message. messages. Yeah, so there there's a gonna, lot of questions. So, we're just going to answer those questions now okay. for you. So, number one. Number one, so Verdi uh, from YouTube wants to know, uh, why, does my, uh, why does my ledger say that there's no available space? Yes, so if it says that there's no available space, it could mean that there's too many applications on it at one time. Usually it can handle three to five applications on it at one time. So if this is the case and it says there's no space, you can just delete an application that's on there that you're not currently using to install another one or to finish installing one that you're previously trying to do. If you just delete, you can delete all of them and start over if you want to like that, but that's definitely going to solve your issue. So that's one. So number two, uh, Piatron wants to know how many cryptocurrencies can you put on the ledger? Yes, so the coins are ARK, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, Expanse, Dash, Digibyte, Dogecoin, Hcash, Komodo, Litecoin, Neo, which is coming soon to the ledger blue, Pivex, Post, W, Qtum, Stealthcoin, Stellar, Stratus, Ubic, Vertcoin, Viacoin, Ripple, and Zcash. But yeah, they, they add have more and they'll continue to add more. So just kind of look yeah. tight if this is the hardware wallet you want to use. That's one of the things. I don't think the ledger is as user friendly as some of the other wallets, but one of the good things about it is it has a lot more wallets than some of your regular hardware wallets. So, I mean, it still is a good wallet. So, our number three question is uh, on the ledger, there's an error message, an error message, and it says unable to remove or install. Okay, so if it says it's unable to remove or install, you can just try simply resetting the device or making sure that you actually have enough room or you're not running any background applications. Some people will be running VPNs or art clients in the background and because of this, their ledger won't be able to connect. So make sure that you're not running one of these if you're trying to do that because that can cause a lot of issues and most of the issues on here can be solved if you aren't running something else in the background or if you simply just restart your computer or your ledger. Right. Our next question is, can you send LTC or Litecoin to your Bitcoin wallet? Uh, no, you cannot. Do not send a certain kind of coin to just any kind of wallet thinking that'll translate directly. I don't know how this idea got started, but if you send 10 Litecoin to Bitcoin wallet, that is not going to translate into 10 Bitcoin you will most likely lose your coins. Whenever you make a transaction, it'll say to make sure that the address is a receiving address of the coin you're trying to send. So if you're trying to send Ethereum to an Ethereum wallet, it'll go through as long as you have an Ethereum address. If you're trying to send Ethereum to a Litecoin wallet and you send it to a Litecoin address, it's not gonna go through and there is a strong chance you can lose your coins. There are some steps you can take if you send it on a wrong channel like if you send ethereum classic on an ethereum chain or bitcoin cash on a bitcoin chain but it's a very complicated process so you'll just save yourself a lot of time and heartache if you just keep sending them to the right addresses so seek warrior wants to know what happens if ledger goes bust or goes out of business so a lot of people are wondering like oh well if the company goes down or if their data leaves your coins and information isn't stored with the company it's stored and the private keys and can be at, accessible through bit 39 seed and there's several of them there's links on the website we can put those below but you can access them without even really using your ledger nano as long as you have your recovery seed and well, your pin code if you're using your ledger but as long as you have your recovery seed and you just follow the bit 39 you'll be able to get it back so it really doesn't matter what happens to the company because you can ex access this data anywhere through a web browser RBG84 wants to know what happens if your ledger stops working, is broken, or is lost or stolen. Okay, so similar to the above, your ledger does not hold the coins on it physically. It's kind of just like a USB drive with information that is available on 
the blockchain and in your private keys. It just kind of acts as a medium for you to interact with them. So if I smash a ledger, it's not going to matter. I could just simply order a new one and they would send it to me and I could just restore my other balance using the BIP39 compatible software wallet and then use my 24 word recovery sheet to be able to get back into my coins. So another question we had is, can you buy your ledger off of Amazon, eBay, or from a friend? <laughs> okay, so technically, yes, you can, but I strongly would not recommend it for a few reasons. Unless you're, if you know this person and you trust them and it's never been opened, sure. But a lot of the emails and comments and concerns and questions we got were just people being like, oh, this is... I should check to see if it's been tampered with or it already came with a pin code written on it. That is a huge red flag. <laughs> do not do that. I know it can seem cheaper or coming in a sooner amount of time to buy one on Amazon or from eBay or some guy you met on Craigslist, but this is a terrible idea. The whole purpose of it is to keep your crypto safe. So you do not want to get a secondhand wallet that is not direct from the supplier because it could be compromised. If you're willing to... If you care enough about your crypto to keep it in a hardware wallet, you need to care enough to make sure that you're getting it from an actual supplier. And you can go on Reddit and the CEO of Ledger, like if you can just tell him about these like unauthorized retailers if there's scams or things like this, and they will try and look out for this and reach out to the companies and like cease and desist because this is obviously something that they don't want. But at the end of the day, please do not buy these. Someone asked if the, uh, what if the recovery sheet was already filled out? Then that's wrong. That's wrong. That is from a third party seller. This is a scam. Do not use it. An actual ledger will not come with this information pre-filled out. You need to fill it out yourself. If you look in our video and our walkthrough and use it, we are opening a new ledger. And as you see, nothing is filled out. We have to do it all in front of you that we do on camera and it is not filled out. So please do not buy one that is already filled out because that is just a huge issue entirely. And maybe there's a fraction of a percent of people that just maybe you're selling those because they don't need any more and they're just being really good willed. But unfortunately, cryptocurrency has had a huge surge recently and a lot of people are capitalizing on new people that don't understand how this works. And a lot of people are falling victim to this. So do not, I repeat, do not buy one that has any of those telltale signs. Right. Yeah. Stay safe, people. So Mr. Ajukaju on YouTube asked if we have to make a wallet at Ledger. We're thinking maybe he was referring to like signing up with your personal information like you no. would do on an exchange. Again, this is not an exchange. No. Um, kind of a, you're buying a wallet. You don't need to sign up for a wallet. You're buying it and then you set it up with the pin code and everything like that that we showed in our video. Okay, so Ian Perlene wants to know... Can we use a ledger on a different computer? Yes, I believe he had some issues accessing his coins on a different computer. And if you're going to use a different computer, that's fine. It does not matter, but you need to make sure the correct software is installed. And again, you need to make sure you're not running a VPN or an art client in the background. Because if you are, again, this could cause it not to connect or obviously you're not going to be able to access your coins or even use your ledger because it's not going to be able to process or synchronize. So yes, you can use a different computer, it just needs to have the Chrome apps installed. So C-Lock is asking, uh, does, it need, does the ledger need to be plugged in in order to receive coins? Uh, no, um, it can receive coins whenever, so long as they're being sent to that address. So if you have that address saved and ready to go and you give it to someone, then great. I know most people put coins on it while theirs is plugged in, so they could do the exchange directly on their computer, so usually it is plugged in, but if it's not plugged in and you send it to the address, there's no reason why it wouldn't go through. You'll just see it next time you plug your ledger in and check your balances. Right, and you can always check it on the blockchain. So this is from Road to Two Comma Club. Two questions, yeah. Yeah, he asked a couple questions. The first one is, can you open the ledger and check the back? Uh, I would not recommend doing this. I guess this comes from the concern again from buying from third parties to make sure it's not tampered with. I would not do this because I would not buy from a third party in the first place. I cannot stress that enough. Just don't do it and you won't have to worry about half of these questions. So just don't do it. Peace of mind. But um, he's sorry. asking if you can check to see if anything's been inserted into your ledger or messed with the hardware. Uh, 
you could try, but I would not recommend it because there's a strong chance you would break your ledger. Uh, just buy from Ledger itself, and you don't have to do this, which is just awesome. Like everyone else, there's does. I've seen um, I've seen some videos of people doing it and explaining how to do it, and I just I would not recommend it. It's just it's such a complicated process, and you could really just damage your hardware. And if you wait so long to get one, if you're getting it right in the first place, then it's just a waste. So this question comes from the concern about if you're. He was buying from the Ledger website and said that it asked for the last four digits of his social. Uh, this is a red flag, unless for maybe is a country-specific thing, but I don't think countries besides the United States have social security numbers. I think they have other forms of identification, but I think a social security number is very much an American thing, mm -hmm. like it being called that. Anyway, um, it said the Ledger website asked for his social security number, uh, the last four digits. Uh, no, this has never happened to me while buying Ledger Nano wallets, and I've bought quite a few. Um, I would not, no, if you are on a website that asks you to do that, this is wrong or your connection is not safe, um, disconnect, restart your computer, make sure you at least have a safe internet connection. If you're on their website buying something, you can run a VPN in the background. Um, that's not going to interfere with anything as long as you're not, you know, actually trying to connect coins in the meantime. So if you are concerned about safety, obviously run a VPN or a client, whatever you want in the background. So this doesn't happen, but yes, any website that asks for your social security number is not safe and is not an actual verified website. Right. So, well, there are exchanges that ask for your your social security number and yeah. that sort of thing. But again, but an exchange is website. different from a hardware wallet. Um, Carl Palmerville from YouTube wants to know if Jennifer is our real name. Uh, no. Uh, my real name is Whitney. My name is Kara. <laughs> We're Jenny from the blockchain. <laughs> no, uh, not our real name. Um, I do get that a lot. A lot of the emails we get. Um, ask if our real name is Jenny or just straight up calling us Jenny, which is fine. It's endearing, but I uh, know my name is Whitney and this is Kara. I think we say that in the beginning of every video. Yeah, just we do. Yeah. And uh, it's just like a play on word, like a kind of play on words, you know, Jenny from the block and then Bitcoin. Blockchain. The technology behind it is blockchain. Haha, <laughs> get it. It's, yeah. yeah, not a real name, but I do appreciate the sentiment. What if you forget your PIN code? Okay. If you forget your PIN code, that's the whole purpose of the recovery seed. So... If you forget your PIN code, you can just reset the device, which you can do on your Nano. And then when it comes back on, you'll be asked questions that will help you verify the recovery seed. Then once you verify the recovery seed, you can set a new PIN code. So it's okay. Yeah. Now another question, what happens when I get a message that says sending failed? Okay, if your sending is failed, then again, this has to do with VPN and ARC clients usually. If the sending is failed, it is you want to need to check to see what your transaction fees are. And because there's an option to personalize them, some people set them too low and the send won't go through. Uh, some people send it with poor connection or it doesn't go through again. Or if you have a different client running in the background, this could invalidate the connection. So if the sending is failed, really just unplug it, plug it back in, restart your computer, restart your internet connection, and try it again and make sure nothing is running in the background because that really is the cause of the problem like 99% of the time. Right. Or I think there might be another issue where some people are confused and they're, again, trying to send Bitcoin to their Litecoin yes. wallet. Sometimes and it'll so, catch. Yeah. Sometimes it, it'll... It'll catch it'll, and save you if right. you're trying to send it'll it It'll say, make sure you are sending to a Bitcoin wallet if you're trying to send your Bitcoin to a Litecoin wallet or mm -hmm. whatever different type of currency. Okay. Jenny, what happens if you lose your recovery seed? Okay, so first and foremost, ignoring all the information out there that you should not ever lose your recovery seed is the most important document. Don't lose it. Ignoring that, if you lose your recovery seed and you still have access to your nano, immediately transfer all of the funds you have onto, onto a different wallet, um, an Exodus wallet, a paper wallet, anything you want. Just transfer them immediately and then reset the device. If you reset the device, you can have the option to get pin code, a new recovery seed, whatever, and then transfer it back on if you still have access to it. That's the best thing you can do. Don't lose your recovery Don't seed. Lose it. But if you do, keep it safe. Immediately transfer all of your coins off of it until you can reset the device and get a new pin code and log in and everything like that. Right. Okay. So someone else asked, uh, how come I can access Litecoin through my Bitcoin wallet? Okay. So on the Ledger Manager application, you can download and install all of the applications you want to use and all the wallets you want to use. Some of them have different 
manager apps that come up on Chrome, like Ethereum does and I think Ripple does. Some of them don't, and you can access through the Bitcoin wallet. So to do that, you're just gonna go into Bitcoin, whatever, and click yes on your, I guess, Litecoin, on your manager, on your, I'm sorry, on your Ledger Nano, and then that's going to log into your Litecoin through the computer. So it just has it saved underneath Bitcoin wallet, but if you just plug it in and click your Litecoin, it'll log into your Litecoin through there. It's just the portal that it uses. Another question is, my Ledger is unable to sync. It is unable to sync. Connectivity issue. Restart your internet. Close your VPN or art client. Restart your computer. Um, always a connectivity issue. If it's unable to sync, maybe it's a space issue as well, then you can just delete an app off of your ledger and do it that way. But if it's unable to sync, it has everything to do with the connectivity and just make sure that your connection is smooth. How do we buy coins? Okay, so yeah, a lot of people wanted to know how to buy coins on the ledger. Um, the ledger is a wallet, not an index. So you cannot buy coins on your ledger. You can buy them, most people I guess start on Coinbase or you can buy them on exchanges, but not the ledger. It'll store it for you, so but you can't buy on it. You can hold it though and you can receive and send from it. So you can send to an index or receive from an index, but you cannot actually do that unless if you just wanna I guess just send and receive with yourself on there, then maybe you can be trading with yourself, but that's not, don't, I don't maybe. think you can even be doing that. I mean, maybe. No. Coach Romberg asked if we can make a video. So Explaining You always. are welcome. You're welcome. This video is for you. Romberg. Going out to you. Romberg. So yes, yeah, so I guess these Ron are probably Berger. 21 of the most common questions about the Ledger Nanner wallet. So I hope this helps you with any issues you might have. Again, if you have any more questions, Feel free to comment them below. We will go through and I will respond as always. You know. In like an appropriate inappropriately fast amount of time. <laughs> I get the notifications sent to my phone, so I will still respond to you. But um yes, I hope this helps. So I'm Kara. I'm Whitney, and we are Jenny from the blockchain. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.